It was clear from the beginning that Mary Barra was going to be a different kind of GM CEO. Her challenge was daunting. GM had a terrible public image. Barra had to win or win back the loyalty of a wide group of constituents, car buyers, dealers, employees, shareholders, the general public, and various units of government. She had to humanize the company and make people want GM to succeed again. A CEO who buried herself in the corner office wouldn't get the job done. And so she went public, very public. The opinion turnaround began with her calm, straightforward, and reassuring testimony at congressional hearings. While I cannot turn back the clock, as soon as I learned about the problem, we acted without hesitation. We told the world we had a problem that needed to be fixed. We did so because whatever mistakes were made in the past, we will not shirk from our responsibilities now or in the future. She showed contrition and determination as she addressed employees. I want to first take an opportunity to again express my deepest sympathy to the families that lost loved ones and to those who were injured. I realize there are no words of mine that can ease their grief or their pain. But as I lead through this crisis, I want everyone to know I am guided by two clear principles. First, we will do the right thing for those who were harmed. And second, we'll accept responsibility for our mistakes and commit to doing everything within our power to make sure this never happens again. That was accompanied by friendly, candid, and effective media appearances. What does it say to the American auto industry and the American people to see a woman on top? When I started here 33 years ago, I had no idea this is, this is the role I would be playing, but I approached every position like I was going to do it for the rest of my life. So I think that's a very strong message about hard work pays off. She made public appearances. Today, intelligent and connected is an engineering reality. It's exactly the right path for us to follow as we build the next generation of vehicles and roads around the world. She humanized herself and the company with effective use of humor. Now, as I thought about what I wanted to say today, I was reminded of a philosophy professor who asked his students, what would they do if they had just one hour to live? One young woman said she would spend her last hour in the professor's class. He was flattered, of course, and asked her why. And she said, because every hour in your class feels like an eternity. <laughs> I promise I won't speak that long. What better way to show a down-to-earth personality than the ice bucket challenge? So I am going to do this, but before I do, I want to challenge three people. First, Dan Gilbert, who has just been instrumental in the rebuilding of Detroit. I'd also like to challenge Phoebe Novakovic, who's the chairman and CEO of General Dynamics, and I'm hoping she'll still be my friend. Mm -hmm. And finally, I'd like to challenge uh, Jeff Gordon, who just won last week the NASCAR race in Michigan. And so, let's do it. All right. <laughs> Getting her publicly soaked was a great idea from her PR department, right? Not so. Tony Servone, Senior VP for Global Communications, told me the Ice Bucket Challenge was Mary's idea. That says a lot. Mary Barra's skillful use of today's communications tools is a model for other business leaders. Let's hope they're paying attention. <laughs>